Shares of Tesla right around the flat line. You can see that they did officially turn positive on the year yesterday. And by the way, the stock is now up 40 percent just in the last three months, still underperforming, of course, uh, the rest of that so-called magnificent seven. But nonetheless, a significant rebound here with more on the road ahead for uh, Tesla and its stock price as it gets ready to report its latest delivery numbers is Baird's Ben Callow. He's got an outperform rating in $280 price target on the stock. You know, Ben, what to what do you attribute the recent significant move higher in the shares? Thanks, uh, David. Um, I think probably two things, really. Uh, number one, deliveries uh, shaping up uh, very nicely. Uh, good news out of China in terms of deliveries. And then second, uh, you know, all eyes on the robo-taxi event, uh, which is on October 10th. And I think, you know, the, the, there could be some surprises there. Uh, a lower-cost vehicle, in addition to the robo-taxi and, and the plan to roll that out uh, in a couple of cities at first is what we think. Yeah, so I would assume we're all going to get focused on that, as you said, October 10th announcement got pushed back, as we know. So you think the possibility is there of a, of a, of a new an announcement for a lower cost vehicle in addition to assuming they're going to share some significant uh, advances that have been made on full self-driving and the like? We do. Uh, it, it makes sense with the timing. Uh, they talked about releasing uh, a lower cost vehicle uh, as early as uh, you know the first quarter of next year. And so um, to get that out in front of people, I think that makes sense from a, from a timing perspective. And this is not the next generation vehicle, but it is a lower cost vehicle, probably produced in Austin, uh, as well as in Berlin, uh, that will allow them to use their current factory uh, footprint uh, before they uh, start expanding into to new factories. Is that in your estimates? Can you model out what, what sort of revenue stream that looks like? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, good question. We have uh, only 25,000 units in Q4 of next year, so uh, volume uh, numbers likely need to go up, at least for us, I think, for the street uh, in, in general. Now, uh, they will have to take li uh, lines down uh, to bring up the, uh, the new vehicle, so it will be a lumpy uh, uh, 2025. And you're, you know, you're switching out volume of a higher price vehicle with a lower cost vehicle, so there will be some movement in numbers there. But I do think uh, more, most importantly, is having a, a new vehicle out. There's really only been, you know, the uh, the S, the three, the X, the Y, and a Cybertruck. Uh, and so I think this is, you know, new product out there uh, could get the uh, the stock, uh, you know, moving uh, even higher than it is now. You know, Ben, just a couple of years ago, the idea of even asking whether or not Tesla can compete with the likes of Chinese EV makers would seem to have been heresy. But I asked the question of you. Many others are asking it as well right now. I mean, how do you see that global competition evolving, given what has been this appreciable increase in terms of the quality of uh, Chinese EVs? I, I think that Musk has been very clear that the biggest competition is coming from China, not just in vehicles, but also in uh autonomy and full self-driving and so that you know we watch that very closely uh tariffs into uh into europe uh definitely help uh, uh tesla there is a different segmentation uh with tesla versus some of their competitors uh, where tesla's viewed as a little bit of a higher end uh the model uh, three refresh they did in china uh is helping sales and i think that we'll see a model y refresh as well in China that should help uh, with sales there as well. But when we get to the actual numbers, when they report numbers, probably you know, two weeks after the 10-10 uh, the event, uh, all eyes will be on margin because they have been doing things like uh, you know, paying down uh, interest rates or giving 0% uh, financing in China. That did impact margins last quarter. We expect it to uh, impact margins this quarter as well. Mm, yeah, and, and on full self-driving itself, you know, uh, what are you seeing in terms of uh, in terms of performance with where they are right now? Twelve point five. I know they've been incorporated generative AI, and and I hear a lot of progress being made. Is that is that really the case? Uh, we think so, and, and you know we've had the opportunity to ride in uh, you know different iterations of the, of the version twelve, and then most recently uh, a twelve point five uh, maybe two weeks ago. And uh, you know there's been uh, the pace of progress is accelerating. And this is really because, uh, you know, as they've talked about, they're no longer compute constrained. They do have this, uh, you know, uh, millions of cars on the road gathering data there. Uh, and it is a full end-to-end -end, uh, 
uh, uh, machine learning versus the, in the past or other pieces of the software that people had to code. And so I think that's one thing that you know we're trying to emphasize is that this is accelerating uh, at a faster pace than it has you know in the past. And and you know there's yeah. so much skepticism because Musk has always been you know one year out, one year out. Uh, but we do think that you know they're they're getting closer to this. So you're a believer in a lo- in Musk's long held but much delayed goal of there will be a robo taxi fleet one day. I think that you know we'll start seeing it in select cities, maybe two, three, uh, San Francisco, L.A., Austin, uh, uh, maybe Las Vegas, Phoenix, um, as early as second half of next year, uh, with a purpose-built built vehicle for the robo taxi. Uh, they call it the cyber cab, um, and I, I think we'll start rolling that out. Tesla. There's a lot of excitement around Tesla lately. Deliveries coming in. Also, we get the robo taxi day on the 10th. You say it's the biggest AI stock, which is not fully recognized as an AI play. Why? Yeah, we also got the China news, too, and that benefits uh, Tesla as well overnight. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's the full self-driving is obviously what's going to drive the robotaxi event. And full self-driving is all neural nets. It's all AI. Uh, they're the leader uh, in the world in terms of uh, miles driven. Uh, they have all this information, which is getting, making FSD better and better. So, yeah, I, I just don't think they have gotten the credit to this point for being an AI play that they that they will. The re, the, the rally is going to continue, um, like we've seen for Tesla since since August the fifth, at least through the RoboTaxi event uh, coming up next month. And so, and the other thing is, if you watch the Larry Ellison uh, Oracle Investor Day talk a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's clear that he's still a huge fan of Elon's and of Tesla. And uh, I don't think there's anybody in tech who I respect more in their opinion than Larry's. Um, and Larry, even though he went off the board of Tesla two years ago, people forget um, part, part of what happens when he did that. He doesn't have to do any filings. And so he has uh, likely not sold any shares. Does and Eric- they're, they're probably worth $9 billion today from the $1 billion that he paid in, in I, December I know, 20th. I don't know how Larry's <laughs> feeding his family at this point. Um, does the Elon Musk factor factor into any of your Tesla analysis? Obviously, polarizing guy. You know, you, you hear these stories about people say, I can't buy a Tesla anymore because it's Elon Musk. Does that factor in at all? Or is that just sort of media and Unknown Twitter color. hype? I mean, it factors for good and for bad, Brian. But I, I think the good is way, way, way more than the bad. Um, you know, this is a guy landing rocket ships on you know platforms in the middle of the ocean. So uh, I, I think for Tesla shareholders, uh, you know, the FSD story is an Elon story. So you, you, you take the good with the bad, and it, it, you know it, it, it's a it's still a, a great, great story okay. going forward. You you trim Tesla. Uh, which is now positive on the year. You trimmed it by about a quarter of your position. Why? Yes. Yeah, so now, we've ebbed and flowed with Tesla pretty well this year. It, uh, we added to it at the last week of August. We talked about it on the show. And going into this RoboTaxi event, October 10th, we felt like we were going to see this thing rally up. Uh, the sentiment has been pretty poor around it. We're starting to see that turn. And the thing that I, I, I like here. Is about trimming it is we're back up to 250. There's a lot of resistance 250 to 260. It's gotten too big within our portfolio. Trimming it back a little. It's now going to be back to number 10 or so. They almost got in the top five. All right, I hope you're all doing well today. At the time I'm recording this video, Tesla is up about 1% in today's trading session. This is after Tesla rose by nearly 5% in yesterday's trading session. Yesterday, Tesla was higher on the news regarding the U.S. and foreign connected car technology. And today we got news about Chinese stimulus, which is also good news for Tesla. And both news events are on top of what I think is already a very compelling setup. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, Tesla broke above this resistance trend line, closed above a key supply zone, closed the gap that formed back in July, and we also got a three-bar setup on the daily time frame. All of this is good news for Tesla as we get closer to October 10th. For those who don't know, I'm currently in a Tesla swing trade ahead of the RoboTaxi event. More specifically, I'm trading shares of a two times leveraged Tesla ETF, as I explained in a video that I posted back on Labor Day Monday. Of course, markets were closed on Labor Day Monday. So if we use the closing price from the prior Friday TSLL, 
is up about 35% since I posted that video. So I'm very happy with this trade thus far, and I intend to do exactly what I said in that video. I intend to hold this position until early October as long as the robo-taxi event is not delayed again. So that's what I'm doing. Now looking ahead, the next event for Tesla is when we get delivery numbers in early October, probably around October 2nd. I'll be honest with you, I don't know if these numbers will be great or not. Hopefully the numbers are good, but I'm not so sure. The Fed is in the process of cutting interest rates right now, and so I think a lot of people will hold back on purchasing new vehicles for right now since interest rates are coming down and are expected to be much lower a year from now than they are at the current moment. I've heard a lot of analysts say they are optimistic about Tesla's upcoming delivery numbers, but that kind of concerns me in terms of the stock. Because if analysts are expecting good delivery numbers, then that leaves less room for a positive surprise when the numbers are released. So here's the thing. I don't know how the market will react to Tesla delivery numbers. But even if Tesla trades lower after delivery numbers are released, I would expect the stock to find a bottom and then move higher from that bottom as we get closer to the robo-taxi event on October 10th. So if Tesla trades lower on delivery numbers, I genuinely think that may be a good swing trade buying opportunity ahead of the robo-taxi event. At least that's what I think about the situation. Well, I don't know what will happen in the short term because anything could happen. I think the bullish price action surrounding Tesla will grow stronger the closer we get to October 10th as long as the rest of the market can simply remain calm. Like I said, I intend to follow through with exactly what I said back on Labor Day. I intend to hold this position at least until early October as long as the event is not delayed again. With all of that being said, I hope you all have a great day, and I'm curious to hear what you think in the comments below. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.